Chef Jimmy Bissonnette from Toro NYC. Thanks for having us. What's up, brother? Too much, man. How are you? Great. Thanks for coming in. So what's on the menu for today? I love cooking paella, so we're going to make some paella. Perfect. Let's pretend I don't know what pie is. You know, not that there's a possibility. I'm going out to eat with you. I'm pretty sure you don't. <laughs> so paella is like the best fusion food ever. The Romans brought steel and the Moors brought rice to the southern part of Spain and this dish was born. That's what we're going to make today. Cool. Yeah. So what's the first step? First step is getting a paella pan. It's got to be nice, heavy bottomed. That way we're going to develop that burned part of the rice in the bottom called the socarrat. And then we're going to load it up with a ton of olive oil. You can add a little bit of chorizo. Okay. So we're just gonna let it render out. We're gonna have to dice up some stuff. Do you right. mind uh, cutting I don't, up that I would, pepper I would for love me? to, that's great. Yeah, yeah, all right. You want me to dice it? Whatever you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> however, however you think is appropriate, go for it. I'm re always getting really nervous whenever I cook in front of chefs. I just mainly feel like they think that I'm taking way too long and I feel like you think that right now looking at me. Half the pepper's fine. I don't, I don't think that we want to be here all day. All right. <laughs> so we're just gonna throw the pepper in awesome. with the chorizo. That's great. Oh, we've got some garlic here, and I'm just going to take the, the stem off the garlic. We already peeled it. We're just gonna smash it, and then just run our knife through it. Awesome. Because I like chunks. You can add that in. You want to take these scallions, cut off the stems, and throw them right in. Okay. You can like even that? cut them bigger. Bigger than that? Yeah. Awesome, and I'm going up just to where it starts to get just a little, where it turns a little green. Color. All right. Save the tops, because we're gonna use that for garnish. So take all the things that you've cut, throw it right in the pan. Even the white stuff? Everything. 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 All right, yeah. It smells great. Like you can really smell like the like the chorizo, the, the aromatics like yeah, coming right out of it. So much, so much of that yeah. smoked paprika and that fermented pork to it. Yep, yep. So one of the things I do, they're just white onions cooked with salt and olive oil, and we add them to the pan now. So we're gonna take some chicken thighs we diced up, and uh, you want to season that with a little bit of salt. There's a pepper grinder right there. Yeah, it's easy yeah. From high up. High that way and all that. over the place, so yeah, it falls okay. like snow. Perfect. Yeah. The more you get on awesome. the table, the you're probably the better you're doing. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yep. And then some pepper, same thing? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Now we'll float that in, kind of sear that, let it cover the fat. And then with chicken, I mean, obviously you want to make sure it's cooked through here, but you're going to keep going. So yeah. it's not about getting that, that cooked all the way through right away because it's going to simmer for a long time. I just want to get it covered in the fat so as it cooks, sears a little bit, but it's going to braise with the rice. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got some sofrito, and we make this out of tomatoes, and we just cook it down with olive oil and onion until it turns to a little bit more like vibrant red. So now we have the uh, calasparra rice. This is a uh, short grain rice here. Take a look. That's the only rice you can really use for paella. It's got to be calasparra or bamba. We keep adding stuff. We want to make sure that we don't add too many things all in a row. Otherwise, we'll cool the temperature of the pan down too much. Interesting. The rice is in. We've coated the rice with everything. And we want the pan to come back up to being super hot. And we're going to pour in. We have our stock. We already measured. It's four to one. So four parts stock to one part rice. So we're going to take our spoon. We're going to knock down the sides. But we're not going to stir it after we've added the liquid. So ideally, all the rice is in the bottom. All the, all the ingredients in the liquid are on top. Yep. And now the rice is starting to cook. The rice is going to start to cook. The more you stir it, the more starch it comes out, and the more it's going to burn in a bad way. Just want to keep moving the pan around for the hot spots. And, uh, oh. but and is this the reason why paella pans have the two handles on them? So you yeah. Can... Everybody cooking paella in Spain in the summertime, they have no hair on their legs from the knees down and burns all over it because they're you know standing in front of that fire right. all day long right. and you're just kind of moving it every couple of minutes so you get that nice even cook all right yeah, we added the clams the clams take the longest of the shellfish to cook so right now we've got a little downtime okay well I do have some wine for us to drink. Love it. So I brought some sherry. It's amazing how scary it is to people, like people associated with, I don't know, like their grandmother or their priest or something. But being that you you cook so much Spanish food that something like this, light, fresh, right? And awesome with yeah. seafood and chicken. That's per it. Perfect. We're ready to go. Yeah. So this is Manzanilla, one of the driest styles that you would get. Hidalgo, a pretty traditional producer. La Gitana is this particular wine from them. So cheers, man. Cheers. To drinking sherry and cooking paella. Yeah. <laughs> I can't ask for a much better of a day. Agreed. I love that. For me, I love like the saltiness with these wines, but it has like good richness too. It's like really, really balanced. It's not a sweet wine, but you can tell that it's gonna have some density and some richness too, which I think a complex dish is this. You need that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. What's going on over here? Is everything all right or what? Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Just keep moving the pan, making sure it's got even contact. Shake it every once in a while. You can see where it's sticking, where it's not, if yeah. it's sticking. Yeah, really, you can see now it's getting really thick. Just making sure we're not getting any premature soakerat. I add hate premature soakerat. Yeah, <laughs> but it happens, it, it happens to happen. everyone. It does happen. It doesn't mean I'm less of a man. Right? Yeah, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, we can add some mussels now. Want to we'll, chop the scallions? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. See, I'm kind of doing it. I'm just not doing it as fast as you. That's what I. That's what I find. Okay. Yeah. You just push across. 
and let the knife, see how much the knife is doing the work? See how oh, before yeah. you were breaking them, they're turning yeah. brown and there's a little bit of wetness <laughs> over here, they're nice and dry. You told me how good I was doing, why are you lying to me, man? <laughs> You're doing well, but you can always do better. Yeah, this is way better. I mean, I got most of them. We're gonna throw, throw our, uh, our gambas in now. All right, and those are just raw shrimp. Yeah, mar I marinated them with a little olive oil and uh, cascabel chilies. It really is starting to smell great. Change in the last minute or two, like you can smell that flavor that, you, that I kind of associate with paella. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You can see right here, there's that socorata starting to develop. Yeah, it looks amazing. Keep adding a little bit of liquid in the center where it evaporates the fastest. That'll help cook that clam open. I'm gonna throw some of the scallions on top. Another thing about paella, people look for that socorata right away. You gotta let it cool off. So we're letting it rest, yeah, like you would it, with, if you're cooking a piece of meat. Yeah. Same sort of thing. Uh, then we've got some nice arbacania olive oil, finish it off. So. Great. So we should check my pairing. Uh, see how you did? Yeah. See. If, see All right. Yeah. So you see that right here? Yeah. That's that. That nice soak Yeah. That's the. That's the money. That's, that's the, the money shot, shot right there. Yes, yeah. Sir. Give me a little bit. That's great. A little bit of soak A little chorizo. Oh yeah. Textures. Perfect. That's great. Oh my god. It's so awesome. Those crunchy bits, for sure, they like add so much texture to it. It's got a crunch from yeah. that soak rot. Yeah, this is amazing, and as always, so much fun to hang out with you. So uh, Pleasure's mine. I look forward to more of this in the future. Cheers, Cheers. man. Oh, I, I don't know if this is a southern dish. I have like all sorts of 